I'm not sure whether you can get addicted to cartridges, but it was always uh, always something about a paper case Ely cartridge that when they were fired, they had that aroma, brings back memories of them early days sitting in the pigeon eye with my dad. That you could see a cartridge would be smoking for a little bit after it was on the floor. Uh, you know, just lovely. Essex gamekeeper Jeff Garrett is reminiscing about his early days shooting pigeons more than 50 years ago. First cartridges that me and my dad ever used were Ely's. Um, you know, so I've got a little bit of history with Ely. But it was whatever my dad could get hold of in them days. And it was worth selling pigeons. It was worth selling game. So we'd take, them, we'd take the pigeons in, get the money, and whatever the game dealer had, uh, you know, later on, we'd buy. Hopefully they were Ely, but obviously there were other cartridges there um, we, we brought. Good job, I had three shots. <laughs> Cartridges have come on a lot since those days. Jeff has stayed true to Ely, even though they no longer have that heady aroma. They have a quick cartridge. Uh, this is 32 gram uh, six shot. Uh, and the Pigeon Select is a 30 gram six shot. But uh, they're all fibre wad. Cartridges have, have obviously, to nowadays, cartridges have, have the manufacturer, the technology has gone into them, has gone you know, way beyond what it ever was in those days. Mm. Um, and, you know, now it's plastic, everything's plastic. And the good thing about plastic is they can get wet without, you know, without the fear of... That was one of the old things in the olden days, a wet cartridge, you'd get it in your gun, but if you was in a flush, chances are that you couldn't get it out again. It's not just the cartridges that have changed for the better. Guns have always been developing. Um, from an old old Bretta 303 in them days to a, a brand new Maxxis Mark II Browning. Uh, you know, I've shot a 28 inch bow for virtually all my life with, on automatics, uh, but this one here, I've, I went for uh, a 30 inch barrel and it just, just makes it a little bit more smoother for me. You know, uh, I'm not the best one to do gun reviews. The fact is that I can use this gun and I feel I can shoot with it a little bit better than the old ones. That's that's all that I need to to, to know for me personally. And a 30-inch barrel on it, um, shooting uh, Ely felt wad cartridges um, through three-quarter choke, for me, is a good combination. There have been big developments in decoys too, although Jeff still prefers to use the real thing. I have used decoys, uh, plastic decoys uh, in the past, uh, you know, um, but a dead real pigeon is the way forward. Um, you, you can't beat them. The difference now is that we have all sorts of mechanical gear. Uh, the whirlies, the flappers, the up and downers, the walkers, um, you name it, there's a, there's a machine out there that can make a pigeon do it. You know, although some situations a mechanical device might help but I um, was then uh, and I still am a very basic traditional pigeon shooter um, which is consistently uh, you know watching a field watching flight lines hopefully getting underneath a flight line getting your hide in the right place building a decent hide um, setting your pattern up rightly so pigeons think you know it's, it's inviting to them to come down and have a look Pigeon shooters' clothing has come a long way over the years. Well, I mean, it's another thing. Uh, you know, the clothing, I've got Jack Pike, Jack Pike camouflage gear. You know, the clothing has gone, again, it's gone leaps and bounds from the old-fashioned corduroy and moleskin trousers to top-of-the-range high-tech boots yep. to, um, you know, trail, camouflage cl uh, clothing. You know, a lot of technology has gone into this to get it right, so yeah. you try and keep yourself invisible. Um, and, uh, you know, by wearing the right clothes, you know, enjoy your day. The old-fashioned barber, <laughs> um, I used to wear one of those when I started, and it was all the rage. Uh, the first time I wore a barber, second-hand barber, when it rained, I couldn't quite work out what all the rage was about because I got frozen cold, soaked through, and I took the barber off and stood it in the corner. <laughs> yeah, he used to stand used up. Used to stand up. <laughs> Got that stiff and that wet. They used to stand up, and yeah. then over the when they were drying out, 
used to just melt down into a heap, a bit like a snowman. <laughs> Hello, mate. Hello. You all right? Uh, mobile phone in those days was you carried it around with a with a attached to a breeze block. Um, so yeah, these these I mean mobile phones today. If you've got like two or three people out, you know, always ring them up, see how they're getting on, yeah. okay. see if someone wants to move, put something here, put something there. You know, rather than having to get in your truck and drive and speak to them. Yeah, make life a lot easier than the old mobile. It's amazing how we ever got on in life. Fifteen years ago, Jeff was starring in the Keeper's Diary series of DVDs, filmed by his gamekeeper friend John Pyle. I think of all the technology in what I've done over the years in, in the filming, the, the cameras have just gone leaps and bounds um, from that early day. The, uh, the early day, like I say, going back to John with his holiday video camera, um, today uh, the technology has just gone through the roof. You know, as we stand here, I mean, looking at the camera now that I'm looking into now, uh, we have the shot cam. I mean, the shot cam to me, the footage that you can get from a shot cam, if you set it up right, you can see where your shot's going. Unfortunately, you can see where you're missing all. When you're making a hunting video, people buy it to see a little bit of technology, but they, they buy them to see things being shot. That's a simple answer to it. And, and the footage you get off a shot cam is second to none. Right out there, the bird is clear as day in there. You can see where you're aiming. It's a good training device, um, you know, so that, that's one of the, the, the biggest technologies. You have aim cam now, which is like a pair of glasses with a little tiny camera on there. So you get the, you line it up, so you're looking down the barrel, uh, so you can see it from an eye point of view and what's going on. That's another, another big leap in technology to one of the biggest things now is, is a drone to give you an idea of how things are going on from, from above us. So the, the biggest leap in technology in the pigeon shooting world and what I've done over the last 25 years is the cameras. You know, that the technology's just gone through the roof. So what else has changed for the pigeon shooter in the past half century? Pigeon's habits have changed because farming habits have changed. Um, you know, in the olden days when I first started, it was all done by an old massive disc drill you know, it doesn't matter if the conditions were really good. Uh, there was always oodles of corn left on top. Um, and them early days, uh, a pigeon shooting. Um, and because winter corn wasn't as much in them days as what it is now, um, there'd be, you'd have weeks of spring corn. Um, you know, and because of the, the tractors and the equipment, it had to be absolutely dead right before they could get on there and drill. So your spring drilling, which is, which is why I always favour for me personally my favourite time of year, it used to go on for three, four weeks, maybe five weeks, you know. So we used to have a little drawn out session of spring drilling, um, you know. But today, uh, on here this year, I had 400 acres of spring corn to go in. Um, the weather came good. I was at the shooting show at Birmingham on the NGO stand and two days, 400 acres went in and you could hardly see a kernel of corn on top, you know, with modern day drilling. So um, that, that's made the habitat of the pigeon or the habits of the pigeon change a little bit. There's more rape about. Um, I can remember shooting on the first field of rape at, uh, in Cambridgeshire and uh, first five or six, seven, eight years of, of rape shooting Pigeons used to get on that winter time and they, so many used to just drop out the trees because um, they couldn't cope with it, with the diet, with the diet of it. 
Um, and over the years, they've they've learnt to digest it properly. They've learnt to 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 deal with it. And now, you know, pigeons survive all the way through the winter time on the rape. That's one of the biggest crop protection jobs that we have to do: keep the pigeons off the rape. Yeah, sure. And I guess harvest time, there's probably less spillage as well. Well, the combines today, they don't need nothing about, you know, the, you know massive great combines, you know, 300,000 pounds worth of combine going up and down the field. They're not going to have it chucking out the back like the old combines used to in the olden days. So, you know, stubbles, uh, you know, stubble shooting, uh, you know, it's sort of like you get a little bit, but not, not too much. You get more shooting on laid corn, laid barley, laid wheat if you're in that area to get some. Um, uh, there's a bit of shooting there on rape stubble, but again, um, in the olden days when rape was about and they got on to rape, with the farming side of things, you know, your stubbles used to be out, used to be about three or four weeks, two or three weeks. Now, with the size of the tractors and equipment, the combine goes out one field, the cultivator comes in the, uh, in the other end of the field, and within a day it's all turned over, all ploughed up, turned over, so, you know, your, your stubble shooting's gone. Technology or not, Jeff reckons that some things never change. Like I said, you've got the whirlers, the spinners, the flappers, the walkers, whatever. Technology's jumped through the roof. But the bottom line of it is, a pigeon is a pigeon, and for a pigeon to survive, it has to feed. And 90% of its feed comes from the countryside, which in turn comes from a farmer's farm. Um, so to, for him to con keep in business, he has to control the pigeons. You know, people need to just get a grip of life and have a little bit of reality and don't believe everything that they see on television because a lot of it's not true. Um, and listen to hard facts from people that know. It is crop protection, but for me, I've been doing it now for 50 plus years. Uh, it's my number one hobby, simple as that. For more about Browning, go to browning.eu. You can find Ely cartridges at elyhawklimited.com and for Jack Pike, it is jackpike.co.uk.